Howdy! Welcome to G. Weber Arts yet again. Today we're going to build something. Okay, so we've got a bit of a project that we're going to do. Uh, as you can see, I've got some built-in cabinets. These came with the house. And I put in some temporary shelves that uh, have outlived their usefulness. And I want to change it over to more of a setup like this with lots of shelving, a bunch of under storage, a bunch of top storage, and a workspace or two. So that's the game plan for this area over here. When you're drilling screws into lumber, lumber pre-drill your screw holes because if you don't like I did on this one because I forgot when I first started out you'll get a nice big split in the wood like that now that's the bottom side so it don't matter much and I can pry it open a bit and throw some glue in there and clamp it shut and it'll be fine doesn't matter uh, another tip for you and most of you probably know this but I'm gonna say it anyways because there might be some beginners out there when you measure, make sure that you measure your area that you're going to cut for at least twice, just to be sure. Because you'll be surprised at how often you'll find that you've measured it wrong and then you cut a piece and it doesn't fit. So measure twice, cut once. Speaking of cutting, when you draw your cut line, I use a square, draw my cut line. It's important to remember which side of your cut line is the piece that you're making. Because if I cut this on the wrong side, this piece that's supposed to be 21 and a half inches long, if I cut it on this side of the line, it'll wind up a sixteenth of an inch short, which with really basic crap framing doesn't matter that much but it makes life easier if it's not short so you want to be on the far side of your cut line your blade edge of the tooth wants to be on this side not this side and that way you'll wind up with what you measured and if it is slightly too long because your wood is bowed slightly or whatever you can squeeze it in or you can trim off a hair more whatever you know so that's just a couple of quick tips i'm throwing out there now that i've got the frame started and uh we'll be back once i start putting the frame up onto the wall just another little quick something for you speaking of drilling and screwing i love deck screws they're coated they got that nice star head so they they don't strip easy. Let's see if I can get a shot. There you go. So you got that nice star type head. And when you pre-drill, they just go in like a bullet. Let's do one here. Give me a second to get set up. All right, so I got my pre-drilled hole down here. Let's get the that set up, get the camera on it. Just like that. One handed so I didn't have any weight on this so it kind of moved around. But yeah, I use my drill, drill my holes, use my, you know, ah, getting tired here. I uh, use my, my uh, gun here to hammer them home and boy, you can build pretty quick once you've practiced it some. So that's just another little quickie tip. I got the frame put up on the wall and put in some temporary legs and uh, we're gonna take a peek under here and show you what I did and it's not finished but it's started now what I got is the cement base of the garage and the wall 
are not equal. There's about a one and a half inch ledge. So running a two by four from the floor down here all the way up really doesn't work unless I want it sticking out another inch and a half, which I really don't. So what I'm doing is I'm putting in these little short studs that sit on top of the cement and brace the back of the this tabletop which the tabletop is screwed into the studs here right on this back plate uh, screwed into the studs with four inch screws which ensures I've got plenty of bite into the wall and it's not going to go anywhere easily. So, my next trick is to uh, deal with these temporary legs and put in the more permanent legs, which... Well, okay, so I had a small change of plan. I decided to rearrange the, the legs the way I was doing the leg. So I got that temporary leg in there, but what I've done is I've moved my whole frame over because uh, I'm going to make enough space here for a 2x4 stand up this way, which I've built here. And that will fit underneath the desktop and stabilize it. Then the other crossbar is at, set at a height for the next level. Now when I built this I was very careful to make sure that the 2x4s were the same length and I got them set up pretty tight and then of course not just building arbitrarily but making sure everything was nice and tight and square. So that'll give me the least problems as I go down the road. So there'll be one of those at that end and one at this end. And they will fit right behind this garage door rail by about an inch and a half, two inches, give or take. I don't remember the exact measurement at the moment, but that's how that's going to work. And I'm going to set this one in place and show you what it looks like in just a second. Be right back. Okay, so I've got it set in place. And you can see how that crossbar fits right underneath the crossbar of the tabletop. And then the other crossbar is up here. And another frame just like this one will sit right on top of that. And that will do the job. Now, of course, I've checked this to make the, sure that this is pretty level. Still needs a little adjustment, but I want to be sure it's upright. And a little tap there. Oh yeah, that's better. Still slightly off, but not much. If I get the camera at the right angle, there we go. You can see that's dead on pretty much. So I'll drive a couple of screws in here and just get it set in place, double check everything, and then put in a couple more screws to keep it in place. And that will be my first set of legs on this side, then I have to repeat it on that side. All right, so that's where I'm at at the moment. And we'll be back with more. Well, okay. Well, okay, here we are. I got that end put in. And I got that end put in. And I built a single leg for the center. It's one 2x4 that's short and underneath this 2x4 and then another 2x4 that's long goes in behind and it's 
drilled in up here and they're drilled together the screws to give a good solid center support this thing is now rock solid um, I mentioned earlier about measuring twice and cutting once uh, when you're working in a garage or even in a house for that matter but in a garage in particular if you want something to come out even close to level and I'll show you that this is pretty close it's off by a little bit and the reason for that can be a bunch of things first of all there's no such thing as a garage floor that's level and I can prove that to you by telling you that at that end the measurement to the bottom of the 2x4 down here this bottom edge was 32 and three quarters and at this end to the same bottom edge is 33 and an eighth <laughs> so that's a pretty good variation actually I think it's even 33 and a half something like that I forget exactly but it was a pretty substantial difference so trying to get these two frames built and get that center frame level you know that's it gets tricky that's why you have to measure everything about 99 times once you got that all done and you got it as close to level as you can get then you're pretty much set once it's built it'll kind of dry and tweak and whatnot but it'll be fairly straight and square as much as possible for this kind of construction all right so that's where we are at the well, okay i got the top on and uh so when i put on a top like this and i like to uh on the leading edge screws the screws are on the front of the tabletop and if i put ones in the center which i do sometimes i'll use a uh, countersinking bit just to make sure that those heads go just a little below the surface or right at the surface one or the other and one of the things i was going to mention earlier about uh, using these hammer guns I can't remember the proper name of it at the moment but you know you got your regular drill and that'll drill in and supply a moderate amount of torque but these things they hammer and they really put out a lot of torque and when you're setting screws in you know you, you put your screw on you pull your collar forward so it doesn't flop around too much and you start screwing into your into the hole that you drilled one trick you got to know is after your screw gets started pull that collar back why I'm gonna tell you if you just get on that screw and get on it and just start hammering away you know before you know it you've driven a screw well into the wood here's an example of one i i didn't pay attention to and that's pretty in there and i've dri hammered them in further than that even and sometimes when you hammer them in that far the wood closes up around the face of it and if you need to ever get that screw out you're going to have a really bad time of it all right i got the frame for the top section put in I decided to put the plywood on afterwards because the frame was heavy enough by itself. I didn't want to have to struggle with the added weight of the three quarter inch ply, which is completely overkill for what's going up there, but it's what I have on hand. Uh, so, the question of any project like this is is it solid? Is it secure? Well, this section here in the center isn't supported on the outside rail only on the back rail and on the sides and let's see if I can do this or if I'm too old and fat there we go 250 pounds hanging off of it unsupported not a problem <laughs> today's project is the real nightmare I have to 
tear down this four by eight table and sort through all this crap to see what's trash and what's treasure. And I can assure you there is a good amount of trash and some treasure. Well, okay, so we got the foam off the tabletop and uh, I'm not probably not gonna scrape off all this cement. It really isn't necessary because I'm just gonna flip it over anyways. Uh, one of the things I was talking about much earlier on was using deck screws that have got the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, star head like that. Is that gonna focus? Probably not. Oh, there it goes. So that nice little star head. If you've ever tried to take apart a project, you know, an old project that had like Phillips screws in it, and sometimes the screws are a little buried, I can assure you, it was never that easy to get a Phillips screw out of an old project. And the best part of it is, is every screw I'm pulling out isn't stripped out in the head. So I can literally reuse every single one of these screws if I so desire, which I probably will, because that upper shelf skin doesn't need to be a fantastic piece of artwork or anything like that. So that's one of the reasons I like deck screws, is you can drive them in easy and you can pull them back out easy. All right, catch you later. All right, so I got the plywood off and now I'm gonna cut a piece off to skin that top shelf. I don't have a track saw. A lot of people are like, oh, track saw, track saw, you know. If you're building cabinets and need dead straight lines, yeah, okay, maybe you need a track saw. But realistically, if you need to cut up plywood just to build something simple, all you need is a chalk line. One of these chalk line things, they cost next to nothing. Uh, I use a piece of old two inch foam insulation board. Just lay the plywood down on top of it. Get my chalk line stretched out taut and in the right place pop myself a chalk line just like that set my saw blade to be just slightly deeper than the plywood itself and then just follow the line and if you take your time and don't rush it you'll get a nice straight cut at least straight more than straight enough for what I'm building here all right so got the chalk line laid out Camera's reset to a different position. Got my gloves, because I don't like getting splinters. Safety goggles, of course. And here we go. Just get things lined up. Nice and clean. And... Just like that. Okay, well, top shelf is skinned. So I just put a few screws down, not a lot, because it's not going anywhere. And it doesn't need to be nailed down super tight, so there's no point in putting 50 screws in it. So just a, about four on this front edge and four on the back edge, that was plenty. Now it's just, Climb the ladder, put the boxes up there, and good to go. These uh, Durabilt uh, storage boxes, they come in different sizes. This is, I think, the 18 gallon, 15 gallon, 15 gallon. I like this size, it's easy to manage even when it's got a decent load in it. The bigger ones, they get pretty heavy. This one's pretty easy. Just toss it up on top of the ladder, climb up a couple of steps, and throw her up there. One of the last things I do is I usually put a piece of tape and write what's in the container on a side that shows outward so that I know what's in it. 
A lot of it's kind of semi-dead storage, but you know, things like Christmas ornaments or whatever, you want to be able to find them without going crazy with it. Okay, so you might remember I was talking earlier about the 2x4x8 foot studs no longer being actually 8 foot or even close to it. Uh, here's one of the reasons that becomes a pain in the butt. Now, as you may recall, between the top of my table here and the bottom of that one, it's four feet, and I was going to put in these studs like this, right? Now, that should take uh, just a couple of two-by-fours, right? Well, no, because they're not eight foot long, you cut one in half and you wind up with that. So, instead of taking one two-by-four to do two studs it will now take one two three four five two by fours and i'll wind up with a bunch of short boards like this okay so here we are we're at the finale more or less i got myself the sheet of pegboard popped that in had to trim it just a little bit because again my 2x4x8s aren't actually 8 foot, but the pegboard is actually 8 foot. So I had to trim that some. Not a big deal. Uh, a few other little details like that. Not, nothing special. Pop my shelf in. Uh, I set the shelf height to roughly 12 inches from the top of the shelf to the nearest beam. That way any spray cans will fit without a problem. And uh, that's pretty much it at this point. Uh, a little piece of scrap pegboard that I had, I stuck in that corner. Um, this corner, actually, I might do something interesting with. Uh, on this side, I may put pegboard, but on this side, where I've got the, you know, this face here and the corner, not much there. I might make make this into like a little cubby, you know, just a little build off a little platform this way and that's it you know maybe wall this side in you know I don't know and it'll be like a little cubby space that will be about I don't know looks like about 15 inches wide and about 19 inches deep give or take all right so let me set up the camera and we'll do the final conclusion on this whole thing all right okay so for our conclusion I've got three receipts here. That's my initial two by fours. I had 12 of those. Uh, boxes of screws. I bought some more screws just after running through the first set so I can have some more for my carts, which we'll get to later. Um, pegboard. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, two by fours, pegboard, screws so forth and so on. A couple of bottles of water. <laughs> so the water doesn't really count. Anyways, my total is $164.36. $164, not too bad. Uh, by the time I add in a shop light and um, maybe a uh, power strip, that'll get me to just slightly over 200 bucks for the whole deal, which is not bad. Uh, granted, it'd be more if I had to buy the plywood, which I didn't have to do, because I have plenty of plywood laying around after dismantling the table. Uh, it also would have cost a little bit more due to the fact that I would have had to buy a few more two by fours. So, Really, under 250 bucks would have done the job. So that's that, and that's where we are. I hope you enjoyed this one, even though it was a lot of handheld mess. So uh, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.
Okay, got the carts built. A um, couple of things you may have noticed when I was in the time lapse on this one and even when it's finished. Uh, this is actually the second cart. The first cart, I forgot to turn on the time lapse. That was pretty stupid. Um, I'll show you that cart in a minute. A couple of things you may have noticed is uh, this one has a little bit of a wobble to it. And that's because one of the boards was warped. And I could have fixed that by loosening up the screws and moving it around and getting it so it was flat. And I just didn't care enough at the time. I may fix it later, who knows. Or maybe I'll just let the weight of things that are in it eventually cause it to start to reform. You know, but it's fixable. It, you just loosen up the screws shove the thing around a bunch, put some weight on it, put the screws back in, you're good to go. You just have to figure out how to counter the twist. That's all it is. So anyways, there's the first cart. As you see, it rolls around real nice. Um, tool bag drops right in there. Ay, 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 come on. I'm getting tired, as you can probably tell. So that just drops right in there nice. Let's get that back where it belongs. Now let's take a look at the first cart and how it's doing. So there you go. Nice cart, got a toolbox on there, my little mini compressor fuel can and my generator and it all just wheels right down underneath the, the uh, space down here real nicely nothing to it so um, give me a second to reset the camera so maybe you can hear me better because I don't even know if I'm recording. I'm shouting at the camera, so I have no idea. Give me a minute and we'll talk about a couple of little quick things. At the moment, I'm just going to really quickly give you an overview of some of my favorite tools and the ones that I used on this build. Um, with just these few tools, you can do a lot of stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to go over that real quick. Some of them are obvious and some are a little bit less so. Okay, so believe it or not, ball cap. Especially if you're working in a garage. Why? Well, it keeps the sweat out of your eyes for one thing. It also catches the gigantic cobwebs instead of your head. Uh, work gloves. I love work gloves. Keep splinters out of your fingers. That's always lovely. Uh, decent hammer is always a nice thing. This one is cheap, but it's a decent hammer. Fiberglass shaft. You know, uh, this, this one's what? HDX, 16 ounce. Good dependable hammer. Works great. Chalk line. I love this thing. You can use it to chalk out a line on, on a, a floor, a wall. You can use it for a plumb bob. You know, you can use it a dozen different ways. Great, great little tool that costs very little. Um, these speed clamps, these things are awesome. You can hold things in place. You can clamp things together. You can even use them on the leg. I'll give you an example here. If you were to put it on this leg like that and clamp it and you can you know move your tabletop around and once you got it in place you move your clamp and the clamp will hold it in place so it's great for doing stuff like that tape measure I've got lots of tape measures but when I'm working on a particular job I use one tape measure and the reason for that being is you will find that sometimes tape measures between one brand and another or even the same brand sometimes there's a little variance in you know how the 
the end piece works or even the measurement on it can be off a little bit. It's surprising. So use one tape measure and that's it. Uh, speed square. This is like the most awesome thing in the world. You measure out your 2x4, put your speed square on it, pencil a line dead straight across. Now you know where to cut. Great, great tool. 45 degree, 90 degree, whatever it is. You can check your level on stuff. Just throw it in there and then be like, oh yeah, that's square. Great, perfect. That's what you want. Safety glasses, an absolute must. I don't care what anybody tells you, safety glasses are the thing. Uh, hearing protection is a good idea too, if, especially if you're doing a lot of stuff. Um, drill, obviously, got to have a decent drill. And these little torque guns, I can't even think of the damn name of it. I keep forgetting the name of it, but I love these things. These things are great. You just got to watch out that you don't overdrive the screw all the way through your wood, because you can <laughs> if you're not careful. Uh, I've got a pair of aluminum um, levels. This is a t this one's a two-footer. This one's a four-footer. One edge is on the uh, on the four-footer, I think. Yeah, the four-footer has a magnetic edge on it, which is cool. Uh, the two-footer doesn't, which is kind of a bummer, but that's all right. These things are great. They come in so handy, so much. Uh, deck screws. I mentioned deck screws earlier. I'm in love with deck screws. I wish they came in more sizes, you know, like really short stuff, but they don't. Uh, I think about one and a half is the shortest you can find. And sometimes when I'm doing like a little shelf or something, you want something like that's only like a half inch or three quarter inch and you're just not going to find it. Uh, pencil, obviously. Carpenter's pencils are great. They don't roll off your table. They're big. You can find them without a problem usually. I usually have a bunch of them laying around. And this little goodie. This is a Bosch measuring tool. It's a laser measuring tool. Now, you know, you think, oh, yeah, I got a tape measure. Why, why do I need a laser measure? Well, let me tell you. Sometimes you want to measure... From in here to up in here and you got your tape measure and I'm gonna put the camera down here for a second so I can demonstrate this all right so you're trying to bend the tape measure down in there and be like oh that's uh 46 and three quarters or five sixteenths or something like yeah that doesn't work real well uh, you can also on some tape measures you can include the length of the body you know, like, oh, that's three inches, and then whatever. That kind of works too, but it's not great. This little bad boy, you just tuck it right in the corner, press the button once, laser lights up, make sure it's hitting where you want it to by looking up, press the button again, and that is exactly three foot 11 and 15 sixteenths. Just shy of four foot. Now, on different places on this wall, as I go along, there are places where it's exactly four foot. And, oh, other favorite tools. Uh, a miter saw. I love this thing. It is just a little workhorse miter saw. It does all sorts of stuff, and I've used the heck out of it. Um, a circular saw, obviously, is a nice tool to have, but, you know... Certain projects you can get away with not having one. Having one is great though. So that's cool. Uh, another jigsaw. Uh, jigsaw is another tool I use once in a while. Not very often. Usually for cutting out notches just because it's quick and easy to do with a jigsaw. You know, uh, I won't say I'm always neat with it as you can tell by how unstraight that cut is. But you know, again, there's going to be something as a little runner along there, so I really don't care. I just thought I'd talk a little bit about tools while I had the moment. Uh, oh, yeah, another, another great tool I love having is a stud finder. Now, funny thing about stud finders is most people, 
Let me show you this. I'll demo this real quick. A lot of people will take the stud finder and they'll turn it on and it'll go. Ooh. Oh, oh, there's the stud right there. Oh, yeah, that's the stud. No, that's the edge of the stud. So what you want to do is you want to come over this way and come back this way. And that's the other edge of the stud. So now, as I've drawn here, there's one edge, there's the other edge, and there's the stud in the middle. Not over here where you first thought it was. So that's how you use a stud finder, and having one, a good one especially, like these zircons are fairly inexpensive realistically, and they work pretty well for the price. So that's a great tool to have too. Uh, what else? What else can I tell you? Decent toolbox, decent tool bag, whichever one works for you. That's a, a lovely thing to have. So anyways, those are my basic go-to tools that I've built more stuff than you can imagine with over time and torn it apart and built it again. <laughs> so, all right, that's enough yakking for now. That's, geez, that's 11 minutes worth of talk. All right, we'll be back. If you like the stuff I'm doing, be sure to subscribe. Uh, by all means, send some comments if you want. I love hearing from fans that watch the videos and go, hey, that's cool, or hey, you could have done this a different way. Uh, because I like hearing about new things that I haven't thought of or tried or what have you. Um, so by all means, put down some comments. All right, so that's the end of this video. That's the end of this build. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, see you on the next video, I guess.